All right, everybody, welcome to day two. Uh, this will be the first day where we'll really start getting into some actual um, CAD objects and design. So uh, first of all, you should be on the website days one through four, and we are again in day two. So um, you should see that we have the day two document here. We have a couple of documents associated with that. You'll need to take the day two quiz. So uh, this video, I'm going to try to keep short and to the point. Um, there will actually be two of them, one for the first part of the document, one for the second part of the document. Um, I will only cover the basics of creating things and doing things. I'm not going to go into detail of everything the document says. So this is a supplement to the document. Make sure you read the document. Um, otherwise, you will not do as well on the quiz because a lot of the content comes from the document. So, with that being said, uh, one of the first things that it's going to ask you to do is pull up this college casting fixture. And there's a link right here. If you click on it, it will pull the document up. It looks like this. And a couple of things that we wanted to talk about is over here on the left, you have your features. And those are just things that, are, that make up the object you see here in the screen. You have parts. Down here in the bottom left, you can we'll learn more about parts later on. And then you have your view cube up in the top right, and then you have your graphic design area where you actually see your object uh, designed out in three dimensions. Now, with this, you have the view cube up in the top right-hand corner, and that combined with this viewing area allows you to see a lot of different things um, about the object. So let's go ahead and get started with playing with the cube. You'll notice that you can click on any of the sides or the corners to change the view. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on top, and you'll see that it rotates it so that I get more of a two-dimensional relief of what the top of this would look like. If I want to go to a three-dimensional um, spot, I can click on this corner here, and it takes me back there. Notice I started here, and notice how the axes, the X, Y, and Z axes move and change with what I click on. So you'll notice that there's a few different ways of looking at it. If I click here, you'll notice that there's top, right, back, front, um, these are just different ways of viewing the object. If you click on any side, then it's going to be a complete side view. It's going to be flatter, more two-dimensional. Whereas if you click on corners, it's going to give you more of that three-dimensional look. So you also have the ability to rotate here and here, um, up and down. And you can also rotate and pitch the object that way as well. You do have some other view options, isometric refers to an ax axonometric uh, view, which basically means that if I click on isometric, all three of the axes are exactly the same in terms of proportion. This is the way that a lot of um, engineering drawings are done when you submit them to be made. So you'll have an isometric view, and you'll have like a top left and side. And so the top left and side make up the different flat versions of this three-dimensional object. So this is a typically a way of sketching a three-dimensional ob object in engineering drawings. Diametric and trimetric just mean that there's two axes is the same or none of the axes are the same. Um, so from that perspective, we're not too concerned with those. But isometric is a common view that you'll run into, and it has this kind of angled look to it. Um, so that's not the only thing we can do from this viewer. We can also zoom in and zoom out. So if I go here and I just roll my scroll wheel in and out, then you'll see that it zooms in and out. This is something that people get frustrated with very quickly because let's say I zoom in here and then I move my mouse over here and I zoom out here. You see how it moves to the corner? The reason why is that the mouse zooms wherever, or I'm sorry, the, the view zooms wherever the mouse is. So you'll see that it's kind of off center now and that can be really frustrating. Really quick and easy way to do that is to pan to move it back. So I'm going to hold down control and right click and drag and that will move my object back into the center of the screen where I want it to be. Now, you'll notice I'm talking all about these mouse commands. There are touchpad commands, but for this class, you must have a mouse. It's um, pretty much a given that if you don't, you'll make your life very difficult. So make sure you get a wireless mouse or you know, a wired mouse for that matter. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have a, a, a mouse. It can be a cheap mouse. It doesn't have to be special or, or anything like that, but you want a mouse um, for this class. So. Again, zoom in, zoom out. We'll zoom in and zoom out at the space that my mouse is in. So if I move my mouse over here, it's going to zoom in way over here. The reason why is that that allows me to very precisely pinpoint if I want to look at that hole, then I can zoom into that hole very easily and zoom back out. So that's the whole purpose behind that. Again, I could pan this image back out by holding down control, right click, and drag. So um, there's a whole list of the shortcut keys, by the way, under quick references. 
And if you go there, then you'll be able to see all the shortcut keys and all the different shortcuts for mouse viewing and some of the different view tools that you can see as well. So that's the casting fixture done. The next thing that we're going to look at is sketch-based modeling. And so all of CAD designs are made up of two-dimensional representations that are then turned into three-dimensional representations. So we start with what are called sketches, and then we use these four tools here, extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft, to create three-dimensional objects, which we then use things like chamfers and fillets and all that to make it a little bit smoother, easier to see or understand. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the extrude tool. The extrude tool creates a linear cross-section that's equal throughout. So I'm going to click on this rectangle here. And by the way, this document is on the site. So if you go days one through four, then it will appear right below this document that we're in, sketch-based modeling. That's what we're in. And you will have to have made a copy of that. And again, that's in the instructions, but you won't have all these tools. You'll initially just have a little link here that says make a copy. Once you click on that, you'll make the copy, name it day four dash, and then your last name, and then you'll be ready to go. So now that we're here, I'm going to click on this rectangle, and I'm going to go ahead and click extrude. It's going to say, I'm just going to do an extrusion of one inch. You'll notice it now has three dimensions. You'll notice the arrow pointing up represents the direction of the extrude. And then I'm going to click on check. And now I have a three-dimensional cube. I could have easily have done that as well by just clicking on sketch one and doing the same thing. So you can select in the viewing area or you can select by feature if you want to, which this is kind of nice sometimes, especially when you have features that have multiple parts, it makes it easier to select all of them at once. So that's extrude, again, linear cross-section, everything is equal. Um, so we have this rectangle now that is three dimensions. The next one we have is revolve. And by the way, I'm undoing these because you'll need this document, but you need to keep them done and finished because that's what you're gonna turn in. So now revolve is gonna make that same cross-section, that, that three-dimensional cross-section, but instead of just making it in a random direction, it's gonna actually make it around something, so around an axis. So if you think of something like a tire, a tire is circular, and it's been revolved around a center point in the middle of the tire. Um, so the same thing is true of the revolve tool. So we're gonna click on sketch one here, and we're gonna click on revolve. And then this is where some people run into the issue. They say, well, it didn't revolve. Well, that's right, because we didn't actually tell it what axis to revolve around. We want to revolve around this back line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the red revolve axis, and then I'm going to click on the line I want to revolve around, which is this one. And now I have my nice chest piece. If I were to mess that up and accidentally click on, let's say, this line, then I'll see this funky looking circle instead. So the axis of rotation is very important. So I want to make sure I click on this line. It revolves around. I hit the green check because I'm done. And there's a nice three-dimensional chest piece. The last one is sweep. I'm sorry, the second last one is sweep. So this one is going to take a sketch and then have it follow a path. The nice thing about this is the path does not have to be linear. As you notice, it's actually curved here. Uh, paths are just line segments that can have a straight or a curved path. Um, and it will just take the sketch and then make it follow that path. So instead of in our example with the cube where it just went straight up, now it's going to follow this S curve. So we're going to click on sketch one, which is that sketch. And then we're going to click on sweep. And then where it says sweep path, just like we had revolve axis, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click on sketch two. Now, if I don't do that, and let's say I just click here, then you'll notice it only sweeps part of it. And then I'll have to click on the rest of it to make it finish. That's why sometimes it's nice just to click on sketch two instead and it does it all at once. So once I'm done, I click on check, and it's good to go. Now, if I messed up or something and I didn't click the right one, maybe I did sketch two and I did sweep and something didn't come up right, and you know I'm here and this doesn't, it's not working properly. I have errors. I can always just click on the red X and get rid of it and then start fresh again. Last one is going to be loft. Loft joins two sketches of dissimilar shapes. So in this case, I have a rectangle and a circle, and I want to join those two together. Now, I could go through and draw layer after layer after layer, transferring it slowly into a circle, but I can let the computer do that instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on sketch one, which is the rectangle. 
I'm going to click on Loft, and then I'm going to click on Sketch 2. And what it does is it creates this unique shape that has a square at the bottom and a circle at the top. And you'll notice it just tapers the edges in until it joins with the circle. Now, another way I could have done that is clicked on Sketch 1, then Sketch 2, and chosen Loft, and it would have done the same thing. So either way works. There's not a right or a wrong way. Um, you just have to include all the components in order for the loft to occur. So that's all for this segment. The next segment, we'll talk about creating your own sketch and then working with these tools.